The next chapter we're going to look at is again a chapter that refers very much back to the work we did on the mole. Okay, so if you're not too sure on the mole and you need to brush up on the mole, now is the time to pause this video and go back and do some work because the mole is going to appear here quite often when we're dealing with what we call volumetric analysis. Now, as the name suggests, when you analyze something, it means that you're watching, you're measuring, okay? And this is a chemistry, so we're going to be measuring something. And the title volumetric analysis means we're going to be measuring volume. Now, volumes of what? Well, as the definition says, volumetric analysis involves reacting volumes of solutions with each other. And you may already have experience of this coming from your junior cert when you ran a titration, where you had your burette and your conical flask and your indicator and you allowed in a certain amount of solution into the second solution and you watched the conical flask for what was happening, okay? Now, if you didn't do that in junior cert, don't worry. We've got plenty of titrations to do. My only hope is that we get back to school at the start of February because that's when I want to do the titrations. I'm going to get the theory covered first and try and do the theory as well as we can. We'll do it nice and slowly because there's no hurry. And then when we're happy with that, please God, the schools will be reopened. We'll go back and then we will take the practical work of actually bringing these volumes together, reacting them in the conical flask and watching to see how the reaction proceeds. Volumetric analysis is used primarily in industry and in research. And what it does is it allows us to see how solutions react together and reveal concentrations. Now, what's concentration? If you go back to the whole idea of having the old orange juice that you used to have to add water to, okay, it comes as a concentrate. So there's a lot of orange packed into that bottle. On the bottom of the bottle, it says dilute to taste. So what you do is you take out a little bit of the concentrate into a glass and you add water. Now that's concentration. So the amount of orange in the water gets less and less and less. Well, not the amount of orange gets less, but it gets more spread out. And because it gets more spread out in the water, the more water you add in, the less we can actually taste it. So when it says dilute to taste, what it means is spread this orange concentrate out in a certain volume of water in order to dilute the taste. When you spread out the particles, they will not be as many of them per centimetre cube, so therefore you won't taste them as strong as you would if it was to concentrate. Now, where are we going to use this? Well, they do it all the time in quality control for vinegar. Vinegar is 5% acetic acid in water, okay? That's exactly what it is. And if they go above that, it can be caustic to the mouth, it can burn. If they go below that, well, it mightn't give the flavour that people want. So they've got to make sure through quality control that the amount of active ingredient, acetic acid, in vinegar is kept roughly at about 5%. So they take random samples and they titrate. And then through their calculations, they're able to verify the fact that yes, there's 5% acetic acid in this vinegar. If it goes any higher, dangerous. If it goes any lower, you might get complaints. So they're gonna be very, very careful that their quality control do plenty of these titrations per hour, checking the concentration of vinegar as it leaves shelves. Of paramount importance in this chapter is knowing how to express our concentrations. Now, chemistry is great because we've got many, many ways to express concentrations. And we're going to look at them all here, okay? Particularly when it comes to medicines, there's a certain way to express the concentration of medicines. So anybody who has taken, for example, any type of eye drops or ear drops or nose drops or whatever type of drops you take, you'll always notice that they're given in terms of a percentage. OK, if you're taking anything else in terms of bleach and so on, if you look at the back of a bleach packet or even Milton fluid, if you have any Milton at home, again, it's given in terms of percentages. Now, what does that percentage mean? Well, first of all, you've got to ask yourself the very general question. What's a percentage? A percentage is a number out of 100. OK, it's a quantity of 100. And that's why the one zero zero, if you take the percentage symbol, it's two zeros and a dash between them. That's actually the number 100. So therefore, if I talk about 75%, it's 75 units out of 100. And one of the first concentrations we're going to look at is, of course, the percentage concentration, because it's probably one of the easiest ones to deal with. So when making a solution, we add a solute to a solvent. Now, I'm giving you this terminology here so that you know what I'm talking about as I move on. So a solution needs two things. If you put a solution together, it means you're putting a solute into a solvent. And usually the solute is the object that dissolves. Sometimes it can be a solid, okay? So for example, salt into water. Salt would be the solute and water will be the solvent, okay? Um, water is not the only solvent we have. We have other solvents like cyclohexane, like alcohol and so on. But for the purposes of this chapter, we're going to simply take water as being the solvent that we refer to.
Okay. When the solute is completely dissolved, now this is important. Go back to the time you had your cup of tea and you put your sugar in and you forgot to stir it. Okay, and you took the first sip and it was insipid, couldn't taste the sugar. Then by the time you got to the middle of the cup, the sugar was decent. By the time you got to the end, it was putrid. Okay, it had got so strong that you couldn't drink it. And we got this kind of a gradation of increasing sweetness. Now, what that means is that your solution is not uniform. Your solution is not homogenous. If you were to put the spoon of sugar in and stir before you drink it, well, then the first sip should be as sweet as the last one. So homogenous is a way that we define a solution where the solute has been distributed uniformly without or within the solvent. Okay, so stirring a cup of tea with sugar in it is a typical example. The amount of water that's used, and we had this in the previous chapter, in making a solution will dictate whether it is dilute or concentrated. Now, when we were dealing with acids and bases previously, we spoke about knowing the difference between strong and weak and concentrated and dilute. And what I said to you at the time was that when you hear the words dilute and concentrated, it refers to the amount of water present. That's all. Dilute means a lot of water. Concentrated means very little water. Okay, so keep that in mind. The precise amount of solute in a given solvent is the concentration of the solution. So the quantity of salt in water gives us a concentration. Okay, the amount of orange concentrate in your water gives you the flavour. And the less orange you have and the more water you have, the more insipid and flavourless your orange is going to be. So we've got to measure this thing as chemists and be quite comfortable on how to measure it under a number of headings. The first one I want to look at is the percentage of solute in a given solvent. Okay, now just take a look at this thing here, acnocide. Notice how it's measured. It's measured as a percentage. It says 5%. Now, what does that mean? Straight away, it simply means five out of a hundred. But five what out of a hundred what? That's where the two letters come in. See the two letters there? W, W. Because they tell you what the five represents and they tell you what the hundred represents. So in this case here, a bit of a misnomer coming up here, it's weight per weight, meaning five grams per hundred grams. So what I would advise you to do, first of all, is write out the percentage, five grams, then look at the two letters. And depending on what the two letters are, they are the symbols that you will give to the two numbers in your fraction. OK, so let's take a look at this. This is the easiest way to measure concentration, as we said already. Many of our household chemicals use it. Look at the Milton, look at the bleach in your in your um, bathroom, look at the Milton under the sink, wherever it is. And look at any of the medicines that you have, particularly medicines that are in liquid form. Just look at the way in which they're labelled in terms of their concentration. It refers to the amount of solute per 100 grams or 100 centimetres cubed of solution. Now, there's other ways to do this. Let's say, for example, we got this. Let's say we got a 7% WW. What does that mean? First of all, what I would suggest you do is turn your 7% into a fraction. It's 7 over 100. What does W mean? Weight in grams. And the second W means weight in grams. So what that tells me is that for every 100 grams of medicine you have, 7 grams of that are the active ingredient. And the other 93 then are bulking agents just to make sure that you can actually handle it. OK. What about that second one? What about percentage WV? Now, percentage WV, say, let me just take these off here. Say, for example, this one was 8% uh, WV. What does that mean? Well, again, it's 8 out of 100. Get the fraction done first in terms of the percentage. Now, W stands for weight, which is grams. That goes to the first number. But V stands for volume. And volume, I hope everybody remembers, is in centimetres cubed. So now what that means is that if I pour out 100 centimetres cubed of my medicine, there will be 8 grams of active ingredient dissolved in that 100 centimetres cubed. So there's a slight difference between the WW, which is grams per gram, or the percentage WV, which is grams per volume. OK, now just a quick question for you. And I want you to think about this before I answer it. What does percentage VV mean? Just think for a moment. What do you think percentage VV means? If somebody said to you that they had a um, 
let's say they had 12% VV. So let's say they came across a wine and the wine had 12% VV. What would that mean? Well, first of all, let's do the fraction. It's 12 out of 100. Now, what do the two Vs represent? They represent volume. So it would be 12 centimetres cubed in 100 centimetres cubed, meaning that for every 100 centimetres cubed of wine that you measured out, 12 centimetres cubed of that would be pure alcohol. So that's where we get the percentages behind beer and wine and spirits. OK, so you might see some spirits could be up as high as 40 percent VV. Now, what that means is that your 40 over 100 is your fraction. And because it's two V's, there's 40 centimetres cubed of alcohol, pure alcohol in 100 centimetres cubed of the actual spirit itself. So just in case you're ever wondering, why is beer 3.5 percent? Because in every 100 centimetres cubed of beer, 3.5 percent, sorry, 3.5 uh, yeah, percent of that is actually alcohol. So 3.5 uh, centimetres cubed in 100 centimetres cubed of beer. When you go up to wine, 12, 13, 14 percent VV. That means 12, 13, 14 um, centimetres cubed in 100 centimetres cubed of the actual wine. And by the time you get to the high percentages like spirits, well, then you've got something like this one here, 40 percent VV, which is 40 centimetres cubed alcohol in 100 centimetres cubed of the actual spirit. So watch out for those three. Now, let's just take a look. How do we calculate these? Well, Let's take two examples here. In a certain medicine, 80 grams of a solution contains three grams of active ingredient. Express this concentration as percentage WW. Now, first of all, here's what we've got to remember. We're looking for grams per grams, okay? Because it's WW. However, because it's percentage WW, I have to have it out of 100 grams. OK, now what am I told here in this question? They're telling me that there's three grams of active ingredient per 80 grams of the actual solution. Now, I need to get that into percentage WV. I need to find out how many grams of the active ingredient are in 100 grams of the actual medication. Now, to do that is quite simple. When you get a question like this, where you have four numbers, in a rectangle and one of the corners one of the numbers in the corners is missing the quickest way that i would do this is i would simply multiply the numbers that are on the diagonal so multiply your three by 100 to get 100 and then multiply the answer sorry multiply three by 100 to get 300 and then divide by the 80 that's left over okay so you multiply three by 100 to get 300 and you then divide that by 80 in order to get as a decimal 3.75 grams of active ingredient per 100 grams of the actual medication. So that there as a percentage WV will be 3.75% W, or sorry, WW, not WV, WW, that's it. Okay, now let me take the second one. Intravenous drips are marked at 0.85% WV. What mass of sodium chloride is needed to make up 250 centimetres cubed of intravenous solution? Now, first of all, we've got to try and understand what does that mean? 0.85% WV means what? Well, first of all, it's not 0.85 out of 100. That's what that means, because that's the fraction of 0.85%. Now, what do the two letters here mean? W is weight, so that's the first letter. V is volume, that's the second letter. So in other words, 0.85% WV means that there is 0.85 grams of active ingredient per 100 centimetres cubed of solution. Now, what does the question ask me to do? What mass of sodium chloride do I require in order to make up 250 centimetres cubed? And again, we do exactly the same thing. Again, notice that you've got four numbers in this box, three of which are given, one which has to be asked for, one of which is being looked for. So we multiply the diagonal. We're going to multiply 0.85 by 250. 
and then we're going to divide it by 100. And we get an answer of 2.125 grams. Okay, and that's it. So when you're given a question like this, and in this little rectangle, you've got three numbers in there and one number missing, always multiply the diagonal and divide by the number left over. It's the easiest way to do it. Of course, you could do the following. Let me just take that off there. So let's write this out again. You could say for yourself, okay, let's write this out. What does that mean? 0.85 per 100. Now, W and V, grams per centimeters cubed. I want to find out how many grams in 250 centimeters cubed. Do you notice anything? Isn't 250 2.5 times 100? So in other words, all we've done here is multiplied by 2.5 to get from that to that. So I do exactly the same thing over here. Just take 2.85 and multiply it by 2.5. And the answer again comes out as 2.125 grams. So how much salt do I require to make up 250? The answer is 2.125 grams of salt in 250 centimeters cubed. So look, the maths, your forte will be whatever way you learnt in your junior sir. People have different ways of doing different things. But keep in mind what the symbolism means. And then using what they give you, you make up your answer to match what you're being asked. Okay, so that's the first one. Now the second one I want to look at is a thing called PPM. Okay, parts per million. Now as the name suggests, parts per million would only really come into play when you're dealing with solutions that are extremely dilute. OK, I want you to think of the following scenario. Let's say, for example, we asked one million people to go to the Phoenix Park on a given day. Let's say we gave one of those people a red hat to wear and everybody else was told not to wear a hat. If you were in a helicopter, how difficult would it be to find in that million that one person wearing a hat? That one person wearing the red hat would be one part per million. If 10 people were wearing, wearing red hats, that'd be 10 people or 10 parts per million. If a thousand people were wearing red hats, that'd be a thousand parts per million. Okay, so we're dealing with something that is quite dilute. So therefore, you're dealing with very, very trace amounts of your solute in your solution. It is particularly useful when analyzing water. Now we're going to come back to PPM again in sixth year because we have a chapter to do on water analysis. So we will be looking at number one, how to calculate the concentration of hardness in water in PPM. And secondly, we will be looking at how to measure the amount of dissolved oxygen in water in PPM. But we leave that till sixth year. Another way of expressing uh, PPM is milligrams per liter. Now PPM and milligrams per liter are exactly the same thing. Parts per million is the same as milligrams per liter and just in case you're now wondering what's a milligram a milligram is a thousandth of a gram so one gram has one thousand milligrams okay so you need to keep that in mind because usually when we're dealing with chemistry we're talking about grams and then we've got to turn them into milligrams so for example um half a gram would be 500 milligrams okay three grams would be 3000 milligrams. So just keep in mind that there are 1000 milligrams in one gram. So for example, if a chemist was to report to us that there was two ppm of chlorine in water, what does that mean? That means that if there's two ppm of chlorine in water, that's two milligrams per liter. And that's the same as a million people in the Phoenix Park and two people wearing red hats. Tiny, tiny amounts of chlorine and water, as there should be, because it's only used for disinfectant, not for any other purpose. So let's take a look at this. On analyzing a sample of seawater, it is discovered that 100 centimeters cubed of it contains 0 0.005 grams of calcium carbonate. What is the concentration of calcium carbonate in PPM? Now, what I would do there, first of all, I'd say, okay, PPM, is the same as milligrams per liter. You have to make that connection to start of these questions. Okay, what are we told? 100 centimeters cubed contains 0.005. So state that 0 0.005 grams of calcium carbonate 
in what? In 100 centimeters cubed of water. Okay, now, if I want to get this into PPM, I have to go to milligrams per liter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that I'm only dealing with 100 centimeters cubed. I need to be dealing with a liter. I have to go to one liter. Now, how many centimeters cubed in a liter? There are a thousand. So if I want to go from 100 centimeters cubed to a liter, I have to multiply across by 10. So that means over here, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Multiply across by 10, which will now tell me that there's 0 0.05 grams of calcium carbonate in a litre. The last thing I need to do is to turn the grams into milligrams. And as I told you a moment ago, there are 1000 milligrams in a gram. So that means I'm going to multiply that by a thousand in order to get it into milligrams, which is going to give me one, two, three, fifty milligrams per one liter. And if I have fifty milligrams per liter, that is fifty ppm. Okay? So you've got to be very careful that when you're asked about ppm, you have to go to milligrams per liter first. And then when you've got your answer in milligrams per liter, you can then use that figure as ppm. Okay, let's do one more of those. The concentration of a solution is 284,000 parts per million. How many grams of solute is contained in 100 grams of solution? Now again, what does this mean? There's your ppm. You write down your ppm as milligrams per litre. And there are 284,000 milligrams per litre. That's what we're starting with. The question says, how many grams of solute is contained in 100 grams of solution? Okay, well, if we move down here, that's a litre. A litre is a thousand centimetres cubed. And I want to go to 100 of the solution. Now, what does that mean? That means in this case that I want to go from 100 centimeters cubed to 100 grams. So I'm going to divide by 10. Okay. Now, by the way, don't forget that when we're dealing with water, the volume of water and the mass of water are always the same. So don't worry about that. Okay. So centimeters cubed in grams of water is exactly the same. So let's do the same thing over here. Let's divide by 10. And that's going to give me 28400, zero, zero. okay, milligrams. So now there are 28,400 milligrams in 100 grams of solution. Meaning what? Well, once I've got that um, 100 grams of solution, it says how many grams are in there? That's milligrams. So you've got to go to grams. There are 1,000 grams in a milligram. So 28,400 milligrams is the same as 28.4 grams in 100 grams of solution. And that's it, okay? So just take your starting quantity and change both sides to the same ratio until you get to the required um, answer. Okay, now the last one, and I'm going to stop after I do a couple of these. I'm going to let you practice these because it's important that you get plenty of practice on this one. It's what we call moles per litre. So here comes the mole again. Now, what's the mole? The mole is 6 by 10 to the 23 particles of any substance. More importantly for this chapter, one mole of any substance is its atomic mass or its molecular mass in grams. Okay, so therefore there's going to be a link over here between grams and moles that we can't forget. So moles per litre. What does that mean? What does M, what's this capital letter M here? This capital letter M stands for molarity. If I know the number of moles I have in one litre of solution, then I know it's molarity. OK, so if you're asked for a definition of what is molarity, molarity is simply the number of moles of solute in one litre of solution. That's all it is. The most important way of expressing the concentration of a solution is in moles per litre. It refers to how many moles of solute are in one litre of solution. That's key. It is also referred to as the molarity of a solution and is given two symbols, capital M or moles per litre. Now I favour using capital M, 
okay and i think in the exams as well they switched over to using capital m the capital m means the number of moles in one liter now please keep in mind it's only one liter we're talking about okay so the capital m is moles per liter for example a 0.75 moles per liter solution of NaOH will contain what what does that mean that simply means that there's 0.75 moles of NaOH in one liter that's all it means okay so that capital M is always the number of moles per one liter of solution sometimes making up a liter of solution would be wasteful so for example when we do the experiments when we go back please god to school i'm not going to be asking to make up a liter if everybody was to make up a liter i'd be pouring copious amounts of waste material down the sink so instead of making a liter maybe we should make a half a liter or maybe we should make a quarter of a liter but certainly not a liter because it's too wasteful so what do we do in order to maintain the molarity now i want you to think about this yeah if a one molar solution is one mole in one liter as long as i reduce both of these quantities by the same degree it will still remain a one molar solution so i want you to think about this if a one molar solution is one mole in one liter well then a one molar solution is also a half a mole in a half a liter as long as the number of moles matches the number of liters it's going to be a one molar solution okay likewise a one molar solution can also be formed if i put three moles of a solute into three liters of solution so as long as the number of moles and the number of liters match you will always have a one molar solution why is that for the very simple reason that molarity is equal to the number of moles divided by the number of liters now that's key and that's the most important definition most important um, formula the molarity of a solution is equal to the number of moles in the solution divided by the number of liters of solution okay so let's try that here if i have one mole in one liter what's one divided by one one if I have half a mole in half a liter, what's a half divided by a half? One. Three moles in three liters is three divided by three, which is one. So therefore, in order for me to work out what the molarity of a solution is, I need to know, first of all, how many moles are in that solution. And secondly, I need to know the volume in liters. And that's key. So, as long as we reduce or increase the solution in line with the solvent, the molarity will not change. And as I've said already, if you put one mole in one litre, it's a one molar solution. If you put a half a mole in a half a litre, it's a one molar solution. If you put four moles in four litres, it's a one molar solution. Why? Because of the fact that the formula we're dealing with is the molarity, which is capital M, that's the concentration, is equal to the number of moles over the number of liters and that's extremely important now what does that give rise to if m is equal to the moles over the liters doesn't that give me a formula triangle watch if molarity is equal to moles over liters well then we've got a formula triangle and what the formula triangle does is it allows me to get molarity yes if i know the moles and the liters but it also allows me to get the moles if i know the molarity and the volume so therefore this triangle is going to be key in moving forward okay hand in hand with this triangle you're going to have to bring back to your memory how do i change from grams to moles and how do i change from moles to grams because sometimes instead of giving you the number of moles they might throw the number of grams at you and what you've got to remember if you're cute enough is that the number of grams must be turned into moles first okay so let's take a look at this thing here there's your triangle the number of moles divided by the molarity will give you the volume and please please remember that the volume the, the, the unit the basic unit of volume in chemistry is the liter okay so your volume has to be in liters your moles are going to be as calculated from whatever the starting point is the molarity will be in moles per liter 
and the volume will simply be in litres. So keep that in mind. To calculate the molarity, we use the formula, as I've said already, capital M equals number of moles over number of litres. And when we rearrange that point to the formula triangle, that's what we get. Look at it again. The molarity equals moles over volume. Keep that in mind. Okay. So therefore, put into a triangle, moles over volume. And then you've got the molarity down here like that. So put moles up there. Don't mistake the two M's. The top one is moles, the bottom is molarity. Or if you want to put it this way, some people do, they say moles over concentration times volume. If you want to use concentration instead of molarity, that's perfectly fine by me as well, if you don't want to get confused. Okay, so remember that when you're using this triangle, the volume must be in litres. Okay, now a couple of examples. So I think the examples work the best. How many grams of NaCl are present in a litre of solution marked 0.25 molar NaCl. Now, whenever you see that, whenever you see reference to solutions and moles or molarity, please, please, please do the following. That the number of moles over the number of litres gives the molarity. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, what am I asked for? How many grams? Uh oh, grams are not in the triangle. But are grams related to anything in the triangle? And the answer is yes, grams are related to moles. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my triangle, like so. I'm going to fill out what I know. How many grams? So the question is, I'm going to put X up here for the moment, okay? Are present in a one liter. So one liter of a solution marked not 0.25. So therefore, what I see by this is that the top one, X equals 0.25 by one, which is not 0.25 moles. Now, what I want to do is I want to turn that number of moles into grams of NaCl. And we did this when we were studying the mole earlier on. To move from moles to grams, it's always by multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by the mass of NaOH as given on the periodic table, NaOH. And sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1. So that gives me 40. So I'm going to multiply that by 40. That's going to give me 2.5 by 4 which is 10 grams of NaOH in that solution. Okay, that's it. That's how easy these questions are. So as long as you see that capital M, or you hear any mention of moles in a solution or molarity, you carry out the triangle straight away and you fill in what they give you and you calculate the missing quantity. Okay, let's do one more. Calculate the concentration in moles per litre, see, moles per litre, of a solution that contains 45 grams of sulfuric acid per 250 centimetres cubed of solution. Now, the first thing I need you to remember, back to the previous chapter, sulfuric acid, remember I told you to learn your acids and bases in terms of their symbols, is H2SO4. Okay, so calculate the concentration in moles per litre. Immediately you carry out the triangle. Okay, now moles, where do they go? Moles go on the top. Liters go here. And molarity goes down here. Okay, so they want me to calculate the concentration. They want me to calculate the molarity. So that means they have to give me the number of moles and the liters. But what do they give me? They're after giving me grams and centimeters cubed. So I've got work to do. The first thing I've got to do is turn 45 grams of H2SO4 into moles. Now at this stage, we should remember that to turn from grams to moles, you divide. And H2SO4 has a mass of 98 grams because that's two, S is 32, and then O4 is 64. So when you add all those together, you get 98 grams. So we're going to divide that by 98 and see what we get. So we get 45 divided by 98, which comes out as 0 
0.46. So we've got 0 0.46 moles of H2SO4. Good. So that's going to go in there. That's going to be that one. Now, what about litres? Well, they didn't give me litres. They gave me centimetres cubed. But it's very easy to remember that 250 centimetres cubed is a quarter of a litre. Okay. And that figure is going to go in there. So that means my molarity is equal to my number of moles, 0.46, divided by the number of litres, 0.25. And on your calculator, 0.46 divided by 0.25 comes out at 1.84 moles per litre. And that's it. So again, the triangle is extremely important. You pull out what we call the concentration triangle every time you hear about a solution and its molarity or its concentration. Okay, maybe another couple of examples. How many moles of NaOH are present in 25 centimetres cubed of a 0.55 molar NaOH solution? Okay, let's think. Moles, centimetres cubed, molarity. The very first thing I do because we're dealing with a solution is I pull out the triangle. Moles, concentration, volume. Now, moles, how many moles? So they're asking me for this one. So that's what I have to calculate. And in order to calculate moles, I'm going to multiply the concentration by the volume. So I need my moles per litre. There's my concentration there. So it's not point five five multiplied by the volume in liters now be careful they've only given me 25 centimeters cubed so to turn 25 centimeters cubed into liters we just take 25 and divide it by a thousand and we get 0 0.025 what does that mean that now the number of moles is equal to 0 0.55 multiplied by 0 0.025 and 0 0.55 by 0 0.025 comes out as 0 0.01375 moles that's it okay so 0 0.0133 sorry 0 0.01375 moles and again that triangle is a lifesaver because you read the question find out what you're being asked and then from the triangle, figure out how do I get that quantity. And the triangle never lets you down. Okay, last one. Let's clear that. What volume of 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide solution will contain 5 grams of sodium hydroxide? Now again, molarity is mentioned. So you go back to your triangle. Moles. Concentration or molarity. And volume in liters okay what am I being asked for what volume so now I'm being asked for this how do I get volume from this triangle volume equals moles divided by concentration molarity ah so do they give me the number of moles no but do they give me anything that is related to moles yes they give me five grams of NaOH. And again, I told you in the previous chapter, learn sodium hydroxide in terms of its symbols. Okay, I gave you that table of acids and bases. You have to learn it because it's imperative you know how to turn names into formulas. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH. So I've got five grams of NaOH. Now, I've got to turn this into moles because moles are the only thing that can go into this equation. So I've got to divide it by the mass of NaOH, which is 40. And that comes out as 5 over 40, which is 1 over 8, which is 0.125. So that comes out as not 0.125 moles. Okay, so that's the top one done. So put that in there, not 0.125. Over the molarity. Well, the molarity is always the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, not 0.15. And when I do that division, 0.125 divided by 0.15 
I end up getting 0 0.83 litres. Okay. Now, if they ask you in centimetres cubed, just keep in mind that there's a thousand centimetres cubed in a litre. So that's exactly the same as 830 centimetres cubed. So I just practice and practice and practice with these. Now, I'm going to flash up three screens here now. On these three screens, there are questions I want you to work on. Okay. I think there's plenty of examples for you to go back on over this uh, video presentation, this video lesson. So the first one I want you to look at is this one. There's two questions there. There's question one and question two. Then these, question three, question four, and then finally these, question five. Okay, I want you to work on those, all right? Now, particularly question five and question three, they are going to use the concentration triangle formula, okay? Question one and question th uh, four are going to use the PPM. I think it's PPM in the first one, isn't it? Oh, it's not, sorry. They're going to use your WW ones. Okay, PPM is question two. So question three and question five, they are the ones that will use the concentration formula triangle. So I'm going to leave you with those. I want you to try them, work your way down through them. And in the next live class we have, we will go over these questions on Friday to make sure that you understand how these changes and how these calculations are brought about.